Welcome to my Guardians of the Galaxy spoiler-filled review. I have a non-spoiler one here on Geekdom 101. Well, World of Geekdom. Geekdom 101 is my main channel. But I have the review that's non-spoiler, talking about my pros and cons of the film without going into it, here on the channel. So check that out if you haven't seen the movie yet. This video is for people who have seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So... Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to the spoilers of the movie. Last warning, here we go. So, let's start with the uh, Rocket Raccoon backstory. I loved it. I thought it was too, truly tragic. It really felt like something out of Don Bluth. And the scene where Rocket goes to heaven to talk to his fallen friends was super touching, super emotional. I was surprised they took two-thirds of the movie to tell that story because... The second act of this movie, like the middle part, drags on forever. Like it takes forever to get to the next big sort of story. I didn't hate that at all. I'm not criticizing it fully, but it was a weird choice that James Gunn made with the editing. There were parts of this movie that were edited very wonky. And I discussed that a little bit in the non-spoiler. Like they would cut to like a different scene and a character would be doing something and you're not really sure why. And that makes me wonder if there are deleted scenes that are supposed to be there to set things up. You know, when you're when you're doing a movie and you're cutting from one location to another, it usually helps to have an establishing shot and then action because then at that point it gives the audience a, a chance to readjust to the new picture. There's a little secret right there. So anyways, um, this this was missing that. I don't know if maybe James Gunn wanted to cut the runtime down. I don't know. The part where they're on the elevator and Peter Quill is like gushing over Gamora, that pissed me off because he came off like one of these like virgin dudes that is desperate for a girl and can't take rejection. I understand that Gamora is the 2014 one. I understand that. And that's fine. She doesn't remember Peter. What's weird, though, is that she's kind of a bitch in this movie. And if I remember correctly, the 2014 Gamora was not this bad. I didn't think she was anywhere near being this bad. And she was. And, I mean, she wasn't, but now she is. Because maybe the Ravagers changed her. I don't know. I just felt like the choice to make her behave like that, I didn't like that big con for the movie. I did love what they did with Nebula. Nebula not only showed off a lot of her powers with that fight with Adam Warlock, but her usefulness as well. Same thing with Groot. Like, in this movie, the Guardians were probably stronger than they've ever been because Groot now has full control of his limbs. He can regenerate limbs. Like, he's super useful right now when it comes to combat. That one scene where he had all the guns coming out of him, like, that was freaking awesome. That was some of the best Groot stuff ever. And the fact that Groot actually spoke something different than I am Groot, that was powerful. That was really, really, really powerful. I enjoyed that. As I said in the non-spoiler, this movie really had a different vibe to it than Guardians 1 and 2. Obviously, these Guardians films have tons and tons of sci-fi, lots of space travel and lore building, and I'm, I'm down for all of that. Like, I'm fine with it. I like how, how science fiction-centric the movie was, right? To the point where some scenes not only resembled Star Trek and had the same feeling, but also Outer Limits. So I'd be one to guess if James Gunn was watching some of these shows before he wrote this script. Specifically, that entire sequence where they go to planet uh, Counter-Earth or whatever, that felt a lot like a hybrid Star Trek Outer Limits thing. Because it's like an alternate version of Earth with these like weird mutant animals. And, you know, the high evolutionary, the fact that he was like this crazy space scientists like that was cool but the saturday morning cartoonness of the character kind of pissed me off like oh come here 91827 i will make you into up like I, I just it kind of became too in your face you know what i mean now i think some folks are gonna like that i think some are gonna love this character i just felt like he was a weak villain and adam warlock was like a clown in this movie i didn't want to say it in the spoiler review but the first act where he fights off the Guardians, that was pretty awesome. Like, that was a great introduction to that character because that character could do a lot with Cosmic Marvel. But then later in the movie, he's revealed to be, like, like half-witted and kind of dumb. And, and it just, it's not Adam Warlock. And I, I don't know why they did that. It was kind of like, wasn't as bad as the MODOK thing from Ant-Man, but it was sort of like, okay, we had this character that we've been wanting to see for quite some time 
time in the com from the comics into the movies, and this is what you do with them. I didn't like that, to be honest with you. I didn't think it was that interesting, and he was kind of a boring character, and I wish he would have done more. He was kind of a clown by the end. In the third act, he's over here goofing off. That whole subplot about saving the children was also a little bit weird. I didn't have anything against it as far as like the idea behind it, but it just it was weird. Like it almost felt or similar. It had a similar vibe to the Shazam sequel that I reviewed last month where you have the unicorns running around. It was very similar like that. And then when the High Evolutionary gets beat by the Guardians, I thought, in my opinion, it was way too easy. And I thought that they just, I mean, at first he was difficult, but then they just kind of teamed up and beat him. And I was like, okay, that's, that's it. Like, you know what I mean? I just felt like uh, very unfinished with that. You know, I kind of, I don't know if it's my own expectations, but I kind of figured this is going to be a more epic movie because it is James Gunn's finale. And there were epic parts. I mean, the part with the ship, they got to get the kids across, they got to hurry before what's-his-name shows up. Like, all that stuff I appreciate it, don't get me wrong. But it didn't feel as grandiose as I kind of wanted it to. I kind of wanted to have, like, the Ravagers, Ravagers there and, you know, people like that. Um, I thought that that was great. You know, and then Peter Quill going back to rekindle with his grandfather in the end, that was neat. But to me, again, they could have done a better idea with it. He was, like I said, he was fun for most of the movie. Probably his least comedic role, to be honest with you, as Star-Lord. Um, I, I didn't think he was that funny in this one. But uh, the first two movies, he's phenomenal. Here, it's almost like he can't get over the whole thing with, with Gamora. He just can't. He's super depressed over it. And I didn't really like... The way they wrote Gamora, but I already explained that to you. Now, um, again, the movie has these wild and wacky visuals. I guess you could say it's somewhat similar to the Quantum Realm, although in a different style. But it definitely feels like fantasy. Like, a lot of this movie feels like one of those mid-80s fantasy films that have kind of the grainy effects to them. That's what this kind of felt like. Except, obviously, modern. The movie had really nice themes of, like, friendship and love and... They really focused on all the characters loving each other, and it was really like a family, kind of like the other Vin Diesel franchise that he's in, where he's in a family, same idea. Uh, I was actually pretty surprised, yo, that nobody died, because going into this movie, based on what was said, how it was going to be the last one, they were going to disband the team, I thought that either, and this is just me in my head, I thought either Star-Lord, Rocket, or Drax were going to die in this one. I thought one of those, if not multiples, were going to get get killed in this movie. And they did tease Rocket dying a couple times in the movie. But it showed the friendship between and the bond between Rocket and Star-Lord. But however, as I think about the movie, I keep thinking about the awkward editing. I mentioned that in the non-spoiler review. In the middle of the movie, during one of the sequences where they're on the, um, the, the counter-Earth planet... I felt like James Gunn was cutting too much to different parts without giving us establishing shots because there was times where I was watching it and I would actually get lost. Like I was watching the movie. I wasn't like not paying attention and then he would cut to something else going on and it would be right in the middle of action and I felt like like I got lost. Like I was like, wait a minute. Okay, now I know where we're at. You know, and that that happened like multiple times during like a five to ten minute span. Like, it happened a lot, yo. And I was just like, okay, why is this editing so haphazard? You know, I don't know if James Gunn wanted it like this or if the editor chose to do it like this. I just feel like it was... It, it, it made the movie very choppy. You know what I mean? One and two, I thought, had a really, really good pace. This one felt a bit choppy because of what I said. And I also felt like they tried to cram a lot into this movie that just didn't work and that wasn't necessary. That's how I felt anyways. At least one of those action sequences could have been cut or at least shortened because there was obviously a lot more story to tell. The Gamora stuff I mentioned kind of bugged me because she was way more aggressive than even she was in 2014. Like I mentioned the non-spoiler. I know that Gamora in this movie is not the one that had the love affair with Peter in 1 and 2 because that one died when Thanos threw her off that cliff to get the Infinity Stone. But... I don't remember Gamora even in 2014, even during Guardians 1, being this much of a bitch. Like, she was just totally out of control. And it's almost to the point where when I was watching it, I was thinking, why does Peter like her again? You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like, dude, you're a handsome guy and you have a spaceship. Like, 
that could get you a lot of girls. Why are you harping on this one? I understand he loves her and everything, but it's not the same person. And she even told him that multiple times. And that's kind of sad too. But to be honest with you, it doesn't surprise me because it's very realistic. When you break up with a chick and some time goes by, she's like a different person. And she doesn't even remember the relationship as well as you do. That's something I've learned a lot from guys and girls and been through it. So the um, only thing you can do when that happens is try to move on and find somebody better. But not Peter. But again, it's a movie and they're going to try the star-crossed lovers gimmick. But she didn't go for it. And that's okay, at least for now. As I mentioned, Rocket was the heart of the movie, and I like how for the first two acts, he wasn't really doing anything. He was obviously dying, and I like how James Gunn spent that time giving us the backstory, so we're still getting Rocket in some very important key scenes for us to understand the character, but at the same time, it he's not there. And then finally, he wakes up, and we have the Guardians once again working together in the third act of the movie. I mentioned the Adam Warlock thing in the non-spoiler and I, all I want to really reiterate on that is he was wasted. It was a big buildup for nothing. The guy who plays Adam Warlock actually does look remarkably like the comic book counterpart. But he was turned into a joke in this movie. Like he was getting beaten up and he was helping them getting beaten up again. And lots of slapstick with him. It just felt off. Now, special effects wise, he looked great. When he's flying and ripping holes through stuff, he looks phenomenal. The special effects look great. But, special effects that do not look great, there was a scene later on in the movie where they fought these, like, well, they didn't fight them, but they kind of like, you know, Mantis kind of brainwashed them. These big sort of, uh, they were like Wrath Tars from freaking Force Awakens. These octopus monsters with big mouths. The CGI for that scene was atrocious. It was really bad. Like, it looked like it was unfinished. I'm not sure if they couldn't get that shot done or if they ran out of time or if it's supposed to look, it look like that, but it was bad. It was, like, the worst-looking CG of the film. It really looked bad. I popped when they said that the high evolutionary is like RoboCop because I understand, like I get that joke because you know in RoboCop they had like Murphy's face with the like half his half of his head was his face, then the back part was like the robotic part, and then he put the mask on if necessary. That's what this felt like. It looked a lot like RoboCop when he doesn't have the the, the visor on, and it was funny. It was a good good, good reference. For some reason, I get the vibe that Adam Warlock wasn't even supposed to be in this movie. Like, it feels like he was teased in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and many of us thought that he would appear in Endgame because he's part of the Infinity Crusade in the comics. That didn't happen. They waited for this movie to actually have him come out of the cocoon, which happened off screen, should have been on screen, and he was just wasted. It felt like when they were writing this movie... The High Evolutionary was always planned to be the villain. But I feel like at some point, maybe James Gunn forgot or somebody reminded him, hey, you still got the, the cocoon. What are you going to do with that? Then he had to go back and add Adam Warlock because he did feel very shoehorned. That was the biggest letdown, I think, of this movie was what they did to Adam Warlock. The best scene of the movie for me was that scene where it was one camera shot and they had all the Guardians fighting off the enemies and there were like... Um, in like a corridor and the doors are closed. The camera was like spinning around them, showing all of them kind of fighting and cameras moving in one shot. That was one of the best individual scenes, like by itself and one of the most impressive ones that James Gunn's ever done. Tons of CGI, of course. I mean, it's not going to be supernatural, you know, in the sense of it's not going to... It's not going to be real, but it was so well done and well shot. Like, that was tippy-top James Gunn. Tippy-top filmmaking, to be honest. Uh, and it kind of, like, you know, it makes the movie kind of, you know, unbalanced in a way because we've got that strange uh, choppy editing I mentioned earlier, and then we've got this scene, which is, like, perfection. You know, so there's lots of pros and cons with this movie. It's more complicated than just saying, oh, it sucks or, oh, it's great. Like, I... There were things about this movie I really liked, but there were also things that I didn't like that were not in Guardians 1 and 2. That's why I'm saying that Guardians 1 and 2 are better, in my opinion, because they had their own problems, but this one almost has more problems that weren't in that movie. This was probably the most emotional movie that James Gunn has done in the MCU or worked on. You know, obviously, he worked a little bit on Infinity War, and he directed Guardians 1 and 2, but in this one, even though he did have the humor, it was way more emotional because of the Rocket Raccoon story. Like, that's something that 
to me goes above and beyond the traditional style of filmmaker. So when I see that and I see like the Adam Warlock scene in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, he's at least got the idea when he does Superman Legacy. If he's going to even direct it, I was going to write it, but I was going to direct it. Um, he needs to really follow that and do it like that. He even said that he's not going to make it a comedy. And there's, there's nothing wrong with like having a little bit of comedy in Superman, but when it comes to his origin, coming to Earth, staying with Martha Kent, all that stuff, that to me should be taken pretty seriously because if not, the fans are going to be very, very upset. But I think that James Gunn's proven that he can do it right even though he's not perfect, certainly not in this movie. It, it felt like this movie... This movie, to me, did not feel like the end of the Guardians. Maybe because they're they're all alive, or because you know their individual stories are still continuing. And it said that Star Lord was coming back, so I assume he's going to be in one of the future movies or TV shows. Or I mean, he's definitely going to be in uh, the Secret Wars. I would assume. So it's not the end of these characters. And part of me kind of wishes it was, to be honest. I love the Guardians. Don't get me wrong. I love them. I want more stuff like the uh, Christmas special. That was good stuff. But this movie made me think, okay, if you trim this movie and re-edit it, I feel like it could be better. I really do. Like This movie needs like some kind of re-edit to like fix some of the problems that were pretty blatant with the weird pacing in the middle. But... And this is a kind of a technical answer I'm giving you. You know, I don't know if y'all understand what I'm saying. I'm sure you do, but it just feels very chunky in the middle, like it's unnecessary stuff there that's going back and forth. So um, those are my thoughts. Spoiler thoughts on Guardians Three. A bit of a letdown. Maybe I have my expectations up too high because it's James Gunn. He's a good filmmaker, and he's you know the other two were good, and it was the big finale for the Guardians. There's a lot of good stuff in this movie. The Rocket backstory should have been its own movie because it was so interesting. But <sighs> there's issues here, man, and I've outlined them. Hopefully you understand where I'm coming from with this. Anyways, that's going to do it for my spoiler review. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought about the movie. Did you think it was mid? Did you think it was great, bad? You tell me. I'm curious. Take care. See you in the next one.